Hi, this is Janie, and I wanted to show you a fun craft to do with kids involving coffee filters. These are the cheap, round coffee filters that, even if you don't use them at home, they're handy to have around the house because um, you can use them in your craft area to hold little items while you're working with something or to catch glitter or beads when you're pouring something, and then you can just easily pour it back into the container. So they're handy to have around, and this is a fun craft to do with it. This is a butterfly that I'm going to show you how to make. And I'll show you how to do some extra things along with it to show the life cycle of a butterfly, just because I used to do that for years when I taught elementary school, and it was really fun. So first of all, you need a coffee filter. Um, you need a mat, either some scratch paper or a newsprint. A newspaper works great for this, um, or sells ads. And you need washable markers. I used Crayola washable markers for years, and um, those work great. It has to be the washable kind. It can't be the permanent, because um, we're going to spray it with water and um, see the design that it makes. This is also a good design for art where you can do colors if you put blue and green, I mean, sorry, blue and yellow together, you can get green when it mixes and you can mix the colors. You could do symmetry where if you do this side and you spray it, this side's going to look exactly the same. So there's a lot of cute little lessons you can get with this. I can't find my crayon, Crayola washable markers, so I'm just going to use some old Stamping Up um, Stampin' Right markers. They look like this. This was a Regal set. This has been several years ago. You could also use the Tim Holtz Distress markers. Or I have another video where I'll, or I'll show you um, other things you can use if you don't have the markers. But usually a lot of kids will have washable markers around. You want to use the brush tip if you're using one of these markers or these Tim Holtz markers. And you do not have to be exact. You can just scratch it on there. You can leave lots of white space. A lot of kids want to go in and color it exactly, and that's fine if that's what they want to do. But when you spray it with water, it all bleeds together anyway, so you won't be able to tell. And um, a lot of kids like to do patterns, and which is fine is if that's what they want to do. But like I said, when you spur it with water, you're not going to be able to see that same pattern. I'm just going to quickly color really messy here. You need to have fun with it. I like to use the more colors the better. Um, if you want to keep it all one color, that's fine. You can do different shades of the same color by the time you spray it and it washes out. It's fun to go around the edge with a different color. Then when you get it colored, you want to get a water bottle. Kids like to um, spray it themselves if they can. And it's important to have your work surface, like a mat or newspaper. Um, if you're working with a lot of kids at the same time, you may want to put your, the child's name on the paper itself because you'll have to put it aside to dry and when you um, come back you want to be able to find that child's work. You can spray it, or the child can spray it, and you're just going to spray some water. You kind of just have to spray it and let it sit if you want it to look fairly close to what you did. You can see how the color is already running, but if you want it to really blend, spray it a bit, and then just let it sit, and it will run together. And I have one here where I did yellow and blue. I just did yellow, blue, and I left a lot of white space, but the colors have run together and formed green in the middle. 
when you're through, if you want to do a one layer butterfly, you just gather it up and put a clothespin on. You can use this type of clothespin. You can use the kind that have the spring on them. You can also just use a wire and twist it or pipe cleaners. You want to get the middle part cinched up in there really well to hold on and it just looks like it makes a better butterfly. And that can be your butterfly or you can put two of them together and make a really full butterfly. I have two that I've colored the same and what I did I laid them on top of each other together, folded it in half, colored this portion, sprayed it, let the color get all the way through and dry, and then you just gather it in the middle and slide it on the clothespin or put it, the one with the spring works well, or like I said a wire or pipe cleaner. Cinch it up really tight in there and then straighten your wings out. Makes a beautiful butterfly. And if you put them in the light, they're a little bit transparent and they're really pretty. Um, here are some other ones I did. This one was with Lindy Stamp Gangs. I've borrowed the, the body. You can use sprays, you can use Distress Stain. You can use Distress Ink and you can use Distress Reinkers and I have, I'll show you how to do that. Once it dry, starts to dry a bit, you want to pick it up and open it up so that it dries more quickly. You can use a hair dryer to help hurry this process along or put it in front of a um, fan in your room or use your um, heat gun. But, and I'll show you real quick what um, this one looked like. It's not completely dry yet, but I can show you what it looked like when it dries. And you'll just gather it in. The kids are going to be anxious to do this, but if you do it when they're too wet, they might tear. But that is up to you. And like Again, you can use a... Air, uh, hair dryer or a hot air gun. And there you go. I'm going to take a piece of green paper. I usually use construction paper or if you have the bulletin board paper that works great too. I'm going to cut about a half an inch piece off. This will be our caterpillar in a minute. And now we have the green paper. We can fold it in half. Let's see. It's a little bit longer on that side. And you can freehand or you can draw half of a leaf on here. And then you can cut it out or the kids can color it, cut it out. And you're just basically doing a shape like that. If you want to, you can end it a little further and put a stem here. I'll show you that on this side so that I don't confuse you. Whoops. I need more of a point. And then we'll cut it out. And it doesn't have to be exact. That's what's great about this is just have fun with it. It doesn't have to be exact. And here's your leaf. And that's a little too square for me. It probably wouldn't bother a child. There's your leaf. And 
and I take a little piece of cotton or batting, take a little bitty piece and tear it off, and I'm going to wad it up and glue it onto the leaf. This will be our egg. It will look like a little egg on the leaf. There are tons of books out there about caterpillars like Eric Carle's The Hungry Caterpillar and um, lots of butterfly caterpillar books that you can read and talk about the story. And so here's the egg. And when the egg hatches, it becomes a caterpillar. And for the caterpillar, you can just have the kids accordion fold it, or you can score it if you want to. It's up to you. I, like I said, I did it with young kids, so I just told, taught them how to accordion fold it and fold it back and forth and back and forth. And um, I either had got... I got it started for some of the younger kids, but the older kids can just figure out how to bend it. And then you have your caterpillar. You can also, if you want your caterpillar to be a little decorative, you can also go along and do a line down either side. And it's best to do this before you fold it, but hey. And I'm just going to be messy with it. And I'm going to draw a little face on this end just because it's fun. And that will be his face. You're going to fold him back up. He doesn't have to be exact. He's just fun. And then his tail, we're going to take that last little section and put some glue I usually just use white glue, but for time's sake, I'm just going to use the hot glue gun to show you. So when the caterpillar hatches from its egg, it eats around on the leaf and stores up some energy. And then when it gets ready, it's going to form itself a chrysalis. And we will just fold the caterpillar back up and it's going to form a chrysalis. And what I do is take a toilet paper tube and wrap it in batting or fiber fill or um, even a paper towel that you've gotten wet and let dry. You wet it, crumple it up, and then let it dry and it comes out um, looking a bit like a chrysalis. And you can, I like to um, just use glue on this but just for time today, I will go ahead and put hot glue. I'm not a real big fan of hot glue, and I sure don't like to use it around kids because I would rather take the time and let them do it themselves, and they can't do hot glue if they're little kids because they'll burn themselves. And it's about having fun and um, crafting with your child and not as much what it looks like. It's about having fun and just crafting and playing. Because kids learn from that more than you would, most people think. And they enjoy that. They'll enjoy those memories. And so this is our chrysalis. We fold our caterpillar back up. Oops, I forgot to tell you. The, the important part. Take your butterfly and fold its wings up like that and put it in its chrysalis. So, first you have your egg, then a caterpillar hatches out of the egg. This is also called the larvae stage. And then he eats and eats and eats around his leaf and he folds himself up and forms a chrysalis and the chrysalis is also called the pupa stage. If you look online there's all sorts of charts showing these life cycles and all sorts of color sheets and books and things to read about it. And then it waits and um, we talk about metamorphosis and changing 
And then when it's ready, it comes out and it's a beautiful butterfly. But when it first comes out, a real butterfly has to unfold its wings because it's got them all folded up in there. He has to unfold his wings and he'll sit there for a little while and he will fan his wings back and forth very slowly to dry his wings out because when he first comes out his wings are kind of wet and when they're dry then he'll be able to fly and he can fly away so it's just fun kids love it and have fun and they can learn from it and so it's really cool so in review you have your leaf your egg, the chrysalis, oops, the caterpillar, the larvae stage, the chrysalis, which is also the pupa stage, and the butterfly, which is the adult stage. And if you use these close pins, they can sit on the edge of anything, your desk, a book. Um, if you use the kind with the spring in the middle, um, they will clip to anything like your clothes or the curtains or even a string hanging from the ceiling. They're lots of fun. I hope you have fun with this and um, go share this crafting experience with a child in your life. Thanks. Bye.